What's up, I'm travel photographer Brendan Vanson of brendansadventures.com and today I'm gonna to show you how to take those silky smooth waterfall photos. As you're getting started in photography, you're gonna start wanting to mess around with some more tools, tricks, and techniques. And one of the big things people jump into is long exposure photography. Now that includes everything over about, you know, maybe one second exposure around that when we're talking long exposure. But it really can also mean just anything you need to shoot on the tripod for a good proper exposure. Now, some long exposure techniques are things like light trails and silky smooth waterfalls, and that's what I'm gonna show you today. And actually, shooting silky smooth waterfalls is a lot more simple than you expect. All you need is a tripod. You might not even need a DSLR camera. You just need a little bit of exposure control. So you need to slow down the shutter speed. Now, how far do you need to slow down the shutter speed? Uh, it really depends on the waterfall, how much water's coming out, how powerful, how fast the water's moving. Generally, if you're shooting even, you know, like 1 30th of a second, you're gonna get some movement. You're gonna get a little bit of that silkiness. If you go down to one fifth of a second, you're gonna get a little bit more. I try to go for about between one and four seconds to get really nice silky smooth stuff. You can go as long as 30 seconds. The longer the exposure, the smoother everything's gonna look, but that might not be the look you're going for, so mess around with it a little bit. Now, of course, you're trying to figure out how do I get that shutter speed slow? and there's a lot of different techniques. The first thing you wanna do is shoot low light. When you're shooting landscapes, no matter what, you wanna be shooting low light anyway. If you shoot low light, you're not gonna have exposure issues. You shoot maybe uh, like right at sunset, right after sunset, and you should be okay. Um, then you can do other things like change your f-stop, your aperture, make a narrow little hole in your camera, shoot around f16. You could even go f22, but you're probably not gonna get the sharpest images. But around f11 to f16, it's gonna get a smaller shutter speed, less light into the camera, causing you to need a longer exposure. Now, if those things aren't working for you, if you need some other tricks, you can put one of these on. This is an ND filter, and it's basically like sunglasses for your camera. You put the sunglasses on the front of the uh, lens, and then it'll slow down the shutter speed because you're not gathering as much light. This is a 0.9 Tiffin neutral density filter, and that means basically three stops. You're slowing down your shutter speed three stops. And it's simple, you pop this thing on the end and you're slowing down your shutter speed, and then you get your longer exposures and your silky smooth waterfalls. So right now I'm sitting in my tent and I'm camped out at Skogafoss Waterfalls here in Iceland. It's absolutely beautiful and all the conditions are coming perfect so I can go out and get my silky smooth waterfall. Uh, it's about 6 o'clock right now and the light gets nice and soft around 7.30, 8 o'clock. So once that happens I'm going to take my camera out and I'll just run you through some of these silky smooth images um, once I'm done shooting back home once I get to warmer confines and I can show you the finished products and maybe explain to you a little bit more about how I shot each particular image. So let's get out there and start shooting some images. So I'm back from Iceland. I'm actually up in North America now in Canada, home sweet home, which is awesome. I've had a couple days to relax and catch up on some sleep. Although I haven't caught up on the shaving aspect, I know the beard is out of control, the neard is out of control, it'll get taken care of soon, you won't have to look at it much longer, I swear to God. Um, anyways, I'm, I've also had time to do my photo editing, and so I thought I would take you through um, some of those silky smooth waterfall photos I took in Iceland, and I'll also show you the difference uh, between different shutter speeds and how it affects how the waterfall looks using Skogafoss as an example which is where I was sitting in my tent explaining everything to you. So let's get at the computer and I'll, and I'll show you this. Okay, so um, let's go into these photos. This is, the, this is the series I wanted to show you of the different shutter speeds here. Um, over here, and I'll, I'll make them bigger so it kind of lines up a bit better. And then I'll, I'll open up the files. But you can see this is um, the quick shutter speed and then it slowly gets longer and longer and you can see how it affects the water being silky. So let's start here. This I shot at f5, uh, 1 over 100 seconds. So 100th of a second. 
and that's just really fast and it doesn't completely freeze the water I don't think even because the water is just so powerful um, but it's basically frozen there um, you can see there's movement there so it's not sharp in the water but it's it's pretty close so that's one hundredth of a second and then you move down to one tenth of a second and to change the shutter speed here all I did was uh, increase the f-stop so I moved up to f16 which means that the whole of light uh, that's getting through the camera or through the lens into the camera is smaller and means you need a longer shutter speed so this is one over ten seconds one tenth of a second and you can already see there's quite a bit of motion here um, to get really really silky smooth waterfalls it depends on how fast the water is moving how big the waterfall is and so there's a lot of different factors so you probably want to test it out once you're out in the field this one tenth of a second for me is cool I like how this turned out because it kind of shows that silky nature but it also shows the power it shows real movement in the water to me so I like how that came out and then if we increase the shutter speed even more what I've done here is I've just put on a, an ND filter a neutral densifying filter which was three stops and so I lost three stops of light I went to 0.6 seconds and you can see now we're on a full-on silky smooth waterfall so gen the general rule is you go a full second and you're going to get a silky smooth waterfall but you can go even less than that as you see here um, yeah and I like the look of that too I probably underexposed this image a little bit but it's it's cool and then I would never do this but for the sake of a series I shot one at f32 and the reason I say I never do this is because f32 you're not going to get sharp images it's just not going to happen um, the real sharp range of your camera is like f5.6 to f11 and then you can probably get all the way to f16 before it really starts deteriorating but that's the really good range of sharp images for landscapes so most people shoot their landscapes between f9 and f11 um, up to f16 if they want to really slow down the water and they're having trouble but this is f32 five seconds and you can see when you go five seconds it just turns the water into basically a giant blur of water and what's happening here is it's just catching all the light from all the water in motion and so if there's water going sideways or in different directions it'll just kind of mess it out into a blob of water here where the water is more perfectly flowing you see it's still got that silky smooth flow so this is another thing it comes down to the art when you're shooting this stuff so if you like this look that's great that's your style that's the mood you're trying to exude whatever that's cool if you like images that have a little bit more um, drama like this or you want something in between that's cool too it's up to you it's your art it's your game I'm just showing you how to do the different things so that you can kind of like elaborate on your own ideas and your own um, images of how you want something to look so yeah now you see the difference between all these going from the fastest shutter speed to the slowest shutter speed. Um, I think quickly, I think I'll take you through some of the other waterfall photos I took in Iceland, just because there's so many cool waterfalls. And uh, I'll kind of just explain to you quick how I shot each one of them. This is Kirkju Felsfoss, and I hope I pronounced that right. Kirk Jo Felsfoss, something like that. And I shot a ton of this. We got a lot of really, really good light. Um, so let's go, I'll show you this one and then this one because they're similar images that I shot different. So this one, um, I, sh I slowed down the sh shutter speed to one fifth of a second which isn't that much and the reason I did it is because I wanted to show all the drama in this water. I wanted to show the motion but I still wanted it to be silky smooth. I also kind of wanted this water not to be still and so I've got all this motion captured and that's just how I wanted the image to look. I could have gone silky, silky smooth by putting it up to like four seconds, but for my description of how I wanted to relay how I felt and how the mood of this image was, that's how I wanted to shoot it. Um, if you go down to, I believe it's this one, no. Um, yeah, this one here, I shot this at 10 seconds, so the mood I wanted to portray when this one was like peace and serenity and calm. And so even though this move, this water is really in motion, when you slow down to 10 seconds, it makes it look almost like ice, just completely smooth. And it really gives a soft, like calming feel to the image. And you get that silky smooth waterfall up here as well. So those are two images, 
two different styles. This is actually the exact same waterfall. Um, basically, this is the waterfall, and I was shooting that second image from here. So same waterfall, two different angles, two different, completely different images. If you were to show people, they would have no idea that this is the same falls. So another piece of advice, I guess, when shooting anything, not just waterfalls, is search around for different angles and different ways to shoot things. There's a thousand different angles. When we were here, there was a lot of photographers, and I might actually have a photo of all the photographers, but they were basically all just standing in a row shooting the same thing over and over again. You really, really, really have to um, develop your eye and develop your, your, I guess, your curiosity with a scene. So you want to really, really, really get out and, and discover things. And I can't find that image, so we'll just move on with our lives. Um, again, we've got, this is Detifoss. And this is another, I wanted to show the drama in this one. So again, I only did one second because I wanted to catch all this mist and you can actually see the spots of the mist because I wanted that drama to show. If I would have gone a really long shutter, it would have been a big ball of mist up here rather than this dramatic stuff. Um, I also wanted to put a photographer in here for scale. Now, even when I did this, this photo can't explain how windy and crazy it was at Detifoss. It was so windy that when we were out on this ledge, we were really nervous that we could get blown into the falls. And you fall into Deddy Foss and it's over for you. So I wanted to show that drama. Since the sky was a little bit bland, it was hard to show that drama. But I did try to capture it by slowing down the shutter speed enough to show how forceful this is and how all the kickback of water. So that was a cool place and a cool, a cool waterfall to photograph. Um, let's move on. We found this waterfall just at the side of the highway and this is probably a good example because um, this image for example I shot at one eighth of a second and you can see the waterfall not really moving. This, this stuff is kind of moving but not that real full-on silky smooth but it's still silky enough with just one eighth of a second. And then if we go down to another image shot from below the falls like I think this one this one was shot at four seconds. You can just see how silky the water is. So four seconds, you got really, really silky water. Um, again, this was shot in the middle day and I shot two filters. I shot the ND filter three stop and I used a medium grad ND filter, which is also three stops. So you have three stops of light slowed down here and then six stops of light slowed down up at the top. Um, let's go down. I think that's basically it for the um, for the waterfalls, other than some other images from Skogafoss. Let's see, I think I got some cool stuff later in the evening. So this is an, a good example of stuff you can do. I went 1.3 seconds, and this is the waterfall, but you can hardly tell it. It kind of has an abstract feel. You get the motion and the photographers and the, the tourists, and that, that came out really cool. This is really, really late at night, and this is 10 second exposure, and you, you've got the motion in the water and the waterfalls. Came out cool. Um, and finally, yeah, finally let's go to, I don't even want to pronounce the name of this waterfall, but this is again about a 13 second exposure. And silky smooth waterfall, as you see there. Um, we got terrible light there. We're, it was pouring as you can see. It was really, really hard to shoot that. So that's 13 seconds earlier in the day. Um, this is one over 25, so you can see the difference between uh, catching the water in motion and blurring the water later in the day. This is, well, that's an HDR, so you can't tell, but this one is 13 seconds, so. Yeah, so anyways, that's it. That's how you get those silky smooth waterfall photos. I'm sorry if I dragged on a little bit long there, as I tend to always do. Um, yeah, I wanna urge you to head over to my website, brendansadventures.com. There is a post on this with all my waterfall photos, my favorite waterfall photos from Iceland in the bottom of that, um, that post. So if you click on me right now, you'll head over to that website and you'll be able to find that link. Um, also, uh, when you're over there, don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter. When you do that, you get a free copy of my Adventure Travel Magazine, Vagabundo Magazine, which is awesome. It's really worth it. And yeah, that's it. I think that's it for the show. Be sure to subscribe as well. Um, subscribe to the channel. We're in North America. We're going to be taking the Via Rail across Canada to the Rockies, doing some stuff in the Rockies and the Canadian Rockies out in Banff. And I've got some gear review. I've got a think tank cover, a trigger trap to review, a new backpack. 
And I've got this beautiful thing. This is a Nokia 1520. The Nokia 1520 has a 20 megapixel camera, so not exactly as packed as the 1020 I used last year, but it's a phablet, so it's quite big and fabulous. And I'll be reviewing that at some point in the next couple weeks as well. So stay subscribed. I'll catch you next time. It's been real. Peace.